Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of The Flash. A lot of interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. But first and foremost, I love that opening. It's like, oh, Barry comes back, and it's like, oh, Iris has gotten this whole spread at the dinner table for breakfast and stuff like that. I was like, what? And it turns out the Speed Force is cooking, and he's like, oh, he's just like, ah, 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 and just kind of awkward. You can tell the moment... Like Iris refers to her as Nora, he kind of like winches a little because I, I, it doesn't really come up really, um, but I would assume that I would have thought it would have played some level, but it doesn't seem like it is. But I thought it was like maybe on some level her looking like his mom. To be fair, usually when she interacts with him, she's different. Di- she's well, it's taken different forms, but more often than not, when it interacts with him, it takes on the form of his mom. So I thought like. And I guess at this point in time, he's so used to it because most times he interacts with the Speed Force and manifests itself like that. But I think I thought what probably got me was like thinking like, oh, the breakfast and everything and like wanting to sit down with Iris and everything. Like, oh, let's have dinner together. It's like, oh, I want to be there for you. Like the conversations, I'm sure like maybe on some level, it's like, oh, these are conversations I actually would have with my mom. So I thought that was rubbing Barry the wrong, but turns out that's not the case. Iris didn't talk about it, but I was wondering if on some level she's getting, she's enjoying this and why she's so quick to be like, oh, Nora, because she never got a chance to really know Barry's mom. So Ellie, Barry's mom wasn't there to be there when, you know, as they dated and when they eventually got married. Like, she hasn't been there along the way with their adventures. The Speed Force has, and even her being like, yeah, no, 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 you're fine being here. You're practically family. And she kind of is because she's been there since the beginning. The spark between Barry and Iris that... You know, her being his lightning rod and everything, like, she's a key part in it. Because I didn't bring it up last episode, but there was that line from Iris who was like, I may be his lightning rod, but you're his lightning, you know? So I just think, I think on some level, and like I said, I didn't go into it, but I think Iris was kind of using this as an opportunity to get to know Nora because she, you know, it's almost like having the actual Nora there to a certain extent. But obviously, like, the Speed Force kind of being, you know, I think it's the longest time the Speed Force has just been a human form and, stu- and stuff like that. Um... But obviously, it's like to the point like Barry's trying to get away from her. But also, also at the same time, his powers are kind of glitching around her, which the Speed Force is like, oh yeah, I'm kind of like a battery. So I'm like, no, no, I could go with you and stuff like that. Which I didn't. I don't, um, I don't know if the other episodes really showcase it. This did. I'm like, I really like the special effects for her lightning because her lightning's like a whole bunch of different colors. I mean, it makes sense. Like a lot of speeds or speeds come from hers, but it's like it's not like you know. I guess it represents the fact. Well, because like hers is like kind of like. It kind of reminds me of, not in a, not a one for one, but it's like the effect and just like, it kind of reminds me more of like Ezra's like lightning from the, the movies. It kind of reminds me more of his lightning than it does like uh, uh, Grant Gustin's, you know? So it, I just thought that was interesting. I was just like, I, I bet it, to be fair, like everyone's got their unique lightning, so it makes sense, but it's like you're the speed force, so of course yours would be like extra unique. But it's just like every time it popped up, it's like, and also just like the way she kind of jumps in, it's like, it's even like, it, there's a, like I said, it's, it's more like Ezra's where it's just kind of like he's there and then like the electricity is like sizzling. It doesn't really work like that with Barry and them. It's just like at the moment he's running, that's when he's there, but then immediately when he stops, it stops. But it's like, there's like a trail with her. I guess that just shows like how much power she's got, how fast she's going. So maybe that's what that's indicating. But like I say, it just the, the effect reminds me more of Ezra's than it does Grant's. That's just all that was kind of going through my mind. But Barry's just trying to like avoid being around her because it's just awkward. And so there's a crime scene, and obviously Chester gets invited, but like Killer Frost has to stay on the low because everything that Killer Frost well Frost has ever done. Luckily, we're going by this Frost on this Earth because obviously she was more Killer Frost on um, Earth Two. Uh, where she actually was a villain and everything. Like, yeah, she's done some kidnapping, threatening um, to kill people, sure, but she's never actually lived up to the name Killer Frost in this continuity. So that's a bonus, both pre- and post-crisis. But I think that's also supposed to insinuate even post-crisis, a lot of that stuff still stands. A lot of the crimes that's kind of held against her in that regard. So she's kind of reluctantly having to, like, stay, you know, Cecile's like, I'm your lawyer, so, like, this is the best option. Kind of let things kind of run their course. Like, we'll try and figure out how to, like, you know, work around this. But the new crime scene puts a damper on that because it looks like it's Frost and Kristen Kramer's like all on it. It's like, yep, Frost is doing it. It's like, no, we don't know that she did this. It's like, well, how many other ice medics there are? It's like, well, we know there are other ice villains like Leonard Snart. So sorry, he's dead. But obviously we're not diving into that. It's just the whole point of like, yeah, there's other people who use ice. It's like, yes. But the fact of the matter is he used a weapon and there's dark matter here. So it's kind of like, yeah, that looks a little, but also Barry Khan brings up like, 
what it's like a tree branch design of like the ice, but it's like hers is typically like I think he was saying like hexagonal or something of that nature. But Kristen's not believing it because at first it's almost like, oh, why are you guys like sticking up so much for Frost? It's like, no, we're just doing our jobs. Barry's the biggest forensic scientist. And I think it's interesting because it seems like she's taken an interest in Barry where she was just like, oh, good work. You know, keep, oh, look at the tech you're using to kind of follow some infrared footprints. Obviously, complete another BS. But um, it seemed like and it, I think even Nora, Nora pops up and is like, oh, my God, she's really into you. Like she's like she finds you really interesting or fascinating or something like that. And I love that. It's almost like, mom, get off. My, get on my crimson. You don't need to be at my job, mom. It's not the same thing, but you kind of get that vibe. But it's like it's interesting. Like her just want to show up and help. It's like, no, I, I could feel that you were kind of a little distressed or something. So I'm here to help you. You know, and it's like it's actually kind of adorable. It, it is really sweet in its own right, because and I talked about it like, you know, the speed force is so different around Barry now. It is like a more thing. Like, oh, do you need anything? Uh, are you sure you're more tired? It's like she is like a doting mom in this moment, because I think. And they talk about it later on. She's changed. She's not the speed force she was before. She's actually a lot more human now. And I think she has, she's always taken a special interest in Barry. And I think in this moment, it's like, oh, like, I think of you more than anyone as my child. Like, I've, you know, because I've, I've, I know the great destiny. I know the great hero you were destined to be, you know? And so I just think that's such a, a fascinating aspect to kind of really think about to that whole thing but obviously the investigation is to find out like okay so who's responsible for this even though everything is pointing to frost even frost kind of getting tired of like well i'm not going to go after um kristen like i was originally going to actually i'm gonna find the actual killer this way things won't be an issue i'll be able to kind of clear my name so she ends up going back to her old spot where she worked um, I love that whole scene, kicking ass the moment, like, Kristen kind of makes it clear, like, yep, everything's pointing to Killer Frost, there's going to be a warrant out for her arrest, because Cecile talks about it, CCPD dropped all their charges because of all she's done, but on a state level, they're still coming after Frost, which I think that speaks volumes, which we'll get to that later, but, um, Kristen's really got it out for, um, Frost, and wants to take her down, um, but, you know, and puts out a reward for her, reward for her. Everyone at the bar attacks her. She proceeds to kick their ass. And the dude, Mark, who fixed the drink for her and everything, was, and, you know, like, they're having this, like, frustration moment. And even I'm like, oh, this is sweet. Like, uh, Frost and, like, oh, Frost and him. And it's like, oh, this is cute. She's got, like, her first potential first boyfriend or crush or whatever. And especially because it's like, oh, yes. And, you know, and it's like, he's taking off his shirt and his playing Nelly's is getting hot in here, which I love. I'm like, obviously, like, the both how perfect and ironic it is because perfect because it's like oh it's hot and heavy because he's taking off his shirt and rippling body and everything he's like oh take a picture and she's like yeah whatever and she's almost like almost like walking away being like why the fuck did i say that um but also the irony being like oh she's a uh frost meta and ice meta and for her to, you know is getting hot in here you know uh many levels to it but i like that she was kind of walking away kind of smiling like yeah things kind of hit it off you know so uh, she never really had much situations with that, so I thought that was kind of interesting. I was like, oh, she's kind of found her first love and everything, potentially. Well, at least first crush, not necessarily love. But I was like, oh, this could be nice for her. She's leading her own life and everything like that, right? So, you know, new guy in her life and everything would be, you know, uh, pretty dope, kind of, you know. Um, another aspect of life is, you know, relationships. So, like, a lot of people around you are in relationships, so. Um, but then, you know. They show up, it's like, oh, we're looking for Frost, and they show up at Caitlyn's place. I thought that was interesting, which at first I was like, well, that's not going to work, because, well, and they talk about it too, like, luckily Caitlyn has no dark matter in her DNA, because, like, they're no, Frost is no longer a part of her, so kind of benefits in that regard, but I thought that was so interesting. It's like, you go after Caitlyn, so, but it's like, the moment they find, like, oh, there's no dark DNA and dark matter in her DNA, then it'll be all copacetic. Uh, but then, like, Frost shows up and wants to break her out, which is like, no, that's just going to make things worse. It's like, just wait. Like, the moment they find out there's no DNA, like, no meta DNA in Caitlyn, like, it'll be all good. You don't have to worry about it, you know? Well, it shows you just how sweet it is that, like, you know, it's like, no, I'm going to bust my sister out. Like, you're not, because it's like, you shouldn't have to pay for the crimes that I committed. But it's also like, no, you're not the same person. They shouldn't hold you against crimes. That's not who you are anymore. You've saved the day on multiple occasions. You've literally been a key factor in multiple crossovers where you've saved the world, the multiverse. It's like, come on, you've played your part on that in many different regards. It's like, once again, not everyone's going to know on what level you've helped save the world and the freaking multiverse. But, you know, so there's that. But it's a situation of, 
you know, Caitlin explained to her, you're not that person anymore. They don't know, like, yes, what you were going through at the time and, like, what kind of pain and suffering you've gone through, but also how much you've grown as a person, that you're not that person anymore. And, you know, Caitlin wants people to see Frost the way she sees her, like, the way Team Flash sees her as a friend, as a hero, you know, so... But Caitlin, well, Frost ended up figuring out who's the one responsible, and it turns out it was Mark. I thought that was an interesting development of like, oh, especially when we kind of find out, oh, he's obsessed with Frost. He's actually been watching her forever. He's the one, that, he kind of pieced it together about like Caitlin and everything about, oh, them being, um, at the very least, they're interchangeable, but I don't know if he necessarily knew that they were two separate people. Maybe he didn't really comment that he, well, I guess hinting that he sent her to the wrong place at that time. It's like, because it's like, well, more so than anything, I got what I needed. And it's like, when she went to that warehouse or whatever, she got scanned. I'm like, what the hell is that about? Oh, he was copying, getting a copy of her abilities because with the microchip he got, which, you know, that combined with. Uh, what he stole from her, he was able to kind of replicate her powers because he talked about his circumstances. And I love her being like, blah, blah, blah. Oh, you got Nicole, you were almost out of hypothermia and now you were like became obsessed with the cold and stuff like that. But for him, he has this thing of like, you know, code is the difference between life and death because obviously, because for him, it's like after like 20 seconds, it, you're freezing, but after that 20 seconds, there's almost this warmth to it. And for him, he's like, I died because I was in the ice for like 15 minutes. And I think it just, obviously, he just came up screwed up because he's thinking like you know because of his experience with it it's just like this perspective of just like oh yeah like ice can be the difference between life and death because it can freeze people you know uh in a cry um cryogenic state and stuff like that so for him it's he's looking at frost as someone who can't it's like you're not you've wasted all these powers you have such great power and potential but you're wa they're wasted on you i've studied all your moves so we've seen that but i also like that the complicated thing of like why they're fighting and stuff like that they're catching each other and like compromising moves and they're kind of look at each other and then it kind of like because he's kind of like curtsying or like leaning her back and she's almost looking at him like what and he's almost like what and then she does it to him and i'm like wait what what's going on here like i thought that was so interesting I'm wondering, could that potentially be a setup later on of like, oh, like she, you know, might have a thing for bad boys. She's kind of a bad girl herself. So like maybe, you know, I don't know. It just, it seemed like that was such an interesting moment between them. Like, like I said, they were both caught off guard. Like, what's happening here? Um, but luckily she was able to, I thought, I thought, it was, I thought it was interesting too. Like she can actually get her eyes frozen like they were. Um, I mean, to be fair, she's not completely immune to ice. Like I think cold enough ice, like she can push it back. But obviously like she's not like a full ice being. She is still human. It is a meta ability so she can handle cold, sure. But it can still kind of affect her on a level like anyone. To the point it's like she was able to fight against him because it's like, yeah, you might have copied my powers. But at the end of the day, you're a human. And ends up using her ice dagger and stabs herself because it's like, I have the benefit of rapid healing, meta healing, ice healing. You don't have that. So, kind of works out on that front. But at the same time, um, luckily Barry and Allegra showed up to kind of help because it's like, you know, Barry wants Allegra coming along because it's like, maybe if we can... Um, because they ended up finding out, like, it was like a fake dark matter, a synthetic dark matter made to look like real dark matter. So whoever it was, obviously, they ended up finding out in her end was someone that was human. But, um, uh, you know, Allegro is there to try and convince uh, Frost to come back. But when the time came, um, you know... Kramer shows up and it's like, I'm here to arrest you, Frost. And they're like, all right. Allegro's like, all right, what are we going to do? And she lights up her hands ready to fight. But it's like, all right, let's, Barry's like, let's calm down. But for Frost, it's like me saving people, doing all that. I thought it was enough to pay for my crimes. But it's like, no, I haven't actually paid for what I've done. So if I want to do the right thing, because like if I stay, you guys are just going to be caught up in it because you're um, – you're um, abating a uh, like fugitive, which I even love that Chester went like, whoa, she's actually going all fugitive because it's like, yeah, you can draw the parallels to that, like trying to find like um, the, the real killer and all this. I, I didn't even think about that until Chester made the reference. But I also love that like when he gave his name and just bears like, oh, I'm glad Cisco's not around to hear Mark give himself that name. I don't know whether it be like, damn it, how dare you give yourself a name or, oh, my God, that name's so terrible. No, let me show you what it, I don't I don't know which way Cisco would have taken it. Probably the former, not the latter, but regardless. Um, but, you know, Frost has made a decision. She's going to turn herself in because it's like it's this way I can pay for my crime. So it's obviously Allegra. It's like I was in your position. I was locked away for five years. It's not like, you know, no one kind of gets reformed from, you know, she has a very she has a different perspective on the prison system. It's like no one gets better from it. So, like, don't do this because there's no guarantee you're going to be able to get out. But for Frost, it's like this is the right thing to do. And she's asking Barry, are you going to stop me? He's like, 
not unless you want me to. And she's like, no, I don't. And so she surrenders. And then you see that look on Kramer's face, like when she comes out and she's smiling. It's like, she's like, yes, I got you. I won. It was almost like she was almost looking like, oh, I'm surprised. Because obviously they had done the like facial matching and like that's why Caitlyn matched Frost. Because like Joe kind of calls her out because he's like, this isn't how we operate, just like rolling up on someone. And it's like, we have no evidence that necessary, aside from your circumstantial evidence of like, oh, they have the same facial structure, blah, blah, blah. But also like you got a random anonymous tip saying it was Caitlyn. Like for him, it's like you're rolling up on like, for him, it's like, whether it's false, whether Caitlyn is false or whatever, the fact of the matter is you can't just kind of take the law and kind of do what you're doing right now. This isn't like the right way of handling things. But for her, it's like, I get it. Caitlyn's a friend of yours and stuff like that. But for him, it's like, I'm hoping that you'd understand like there's law and we need to kind of keep order. Like it's so interesting. So like she's so anal about the law because that was the thing of like, it seemed like she was so anal about going after um, Frost. But the question is why? I think she's anti-meta. I think that's what she's going to... I think she's going to take an interest in Barry. That's why she was like, oh, you got all this high-tech te tech? Good. Because we're gonna, cause she she made it clear that, like, oh, like, metas have been allowed to run rampant in Central City. I think she's very anti-meta. Because even in the beginning, it's like, oh, you think the Flash is... Like, no, no, he's good for now. So it's almost like she's waiting for him to screw up and be the bad guy. Which, obviously, Barry was one time. Um, and that was, like, when he was being controlled and stuff like that. So that was years ago, obviously. But it is a thing of, like, I think that's where this story potentially is going to go with Kristen, where she's going to try and, like, turn the city against metahumans. We might kind of, once again, kind of like that X-Men. Because I don't know if that's come up in the, well, I was about to say, I have to take it back, because I, I've referenced it. Well, I was about to say, I don't know if that's happened in the comics. Obviously, you know, that's a, a big thing in X-Men of, like, humans versus uh, mutants, but it's like, does the same thing apply in DC? It's like, well, to be fair, we know a, a future existed like that because of Legends of Tomorrow, where uh, metas were being hunted and captured by Argus, so even in this continuity, yes, that was kind of redcon just because of season four of Legends, but once again, we still don't know the full effect of how different things are now post-crisis, you know, so... But it begs the question, like, that could still be a potential future, and that might, this might be the beginnings of that. Because, it, like I said, like, why they're after Frost now of all times? It's like you pick such a weird time to, it's almost like they use Mira Monarch's attack on the city as just kind of the last, like, to give them the wiggle room necessary to make this happen. It's like they've been biding their time, but there's too much pro-meta, like, stuff going around. But it's like there's also so much negative meta stuff that I think they're trying to weave their way in by, like, they're trying to... I think they're, I think that's where we're setting this up. Like I said, Kramer just seemed too happy about taking down Frost, even though Frost wasn't the killer. It's still like, I got you. I bagged me a meta. I think that's where we're going with this. That's kind of what I figured before, but I think even more so just like how excited she was about taking down Frost. And obviously for everyone, the whole thing is like, you know, Caitlyn trying to do whatever she can to like free Frost and like, you know, now it's like she's pled guilty, but now what it comes down to her sentencing is what the judge ultimately decides to do. So... Obviously, I think Allegra's got her perspective on things, and she didn't like the way things kind of played out. Once again, as someone who's been in that position, um, I don't know if Barry's talked about it, but he's been in prison, too, because of the whole DeVoe situation. So, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, will that conversation come up in any shape or form? So, I thought that was kind of fascinating. Uh, but another angle to this episode, too, was, like I said, going circling back to it, is the Nora thing, which Barry, you know, talks to Iris about, and she's like, right, that's why you don't call her Nora. It's because for him, it's like, he's always known it as the Speed Force, and now it's like, becoming a little too, like, oh, friendly, and he's like, she's like, maybe I shouldn't have brought her. It's like, no, her being here is actually the safest thing. This is the safest place she can be. It's just for him, he's so used to the relationship being one way. It's like, oh, she's the speed force. His powers come from her. But that's kind of it. But now she's become something more. She's no longer the speed force she was. She's becoming a lot more human. And it kind of caught Barry off guard because he was so used to her. Like I said, I think it runs a little deeper than he kind of went at it. Like I said, I'm sure looking like your mom. Plus, no, I'm sure you still haven't really forgiven yourself for killing her before. Like, I'm sure there's some of that, but I just, for that being his reasoning, I thought was kind of interesting. Like, oh, just the dynamic of our relationship changes. Like, I, I thought you would have issue with her, once again, just being your mom and just playing that role to a certain extent inadvertently. And also, oh yeah, I killed you the last time we met, so I thought that would complicate things a little bit on that front. You know, actually, well, because I was about to say, like, the last time it manifested itself was as Oliver, but that was before, like, Ramsey manipulated Barry into killing it, and, you know, and it looked like his mom at that time, but, you know, so I just, regardless, I was, I was thinking about something else, uh, but, 
you know, for Barry, it's like, I've got to, you know, adapt to this new relationship because this is where you belong. You, you know, once again, she has been there since like the beginning in this regard. Like, you know, you chose me and let me be the hero I'm meant to be. But it's like, we can do this together. You know, I just got to adjust to our new relationship. So, you know, she's getting her powers back to full strength. He's got his powers under control. So it's like, let's work together and take down the other forces. So. Um, it's definitely going to be interesting to ultimately see where all of this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode. But really, that's something I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.